Hello, dear brothers and sisters. Today we will continue to uh, talk about the Gospels from Sunday readings from the Orthodox Church. But before we start uh, reading today, I would like to bring to your attention that reading the Gospel should be different from any book. That when we read the Gospels of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as we have said in the past, we are reading for our salvation. We are reading them for getting closer to the Lord, for receiving our freedom from all other possessions in this world and entering into the kingdom of God. And for that reason, we need to pay a specific attention to our readings. We need to read them slowly. We need to read them with ultimate attention and think about them long after we have read them. We need to digest them like we would digest food. We would chew, them, chew it slowly and then we would wait until that food became energy for our body to function. The same way when we read the Gospels, we need to read them slowly as if we were chewing it slowly and we need to think about it for a while to digest it, to take the most out of it for ourselves. Sometimes some passages of the Gospel don't make exactly the sense that we were looking for. It's okay, we need to go on and later come back to the same passage. Perhaps the life that we are living today, the thoughts that we have today, the moods that we have are not allowing us to take uh, maximum, uh, maximum knowledge and maximum wisdom out of those passages and implement them in our life. And perhaps if we go on and we live our life and we change things in our life, we repent, we turn around and we get closer to God by our prayers, but our life, by our words and relationship with others, we can come back to that same passage and then it will make sense. More importantly, when we read the gospel, before we read the gospel, we are to read it with prayer, start it with prayer. And there is a beautiful prayer in the Orthodox Church, which I will recite now, and we will start with that. Shine within our hearts, loving Master, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our minds that we may comprehend the message of your gospel. Instill in us also reverence for your blessed commandments, so that having conquered all sinful desires, we may pursue a spiritual life, thinking and doing all those things that are pleasing to you, for you, Christ our God, are the light of our souls and bodies, and to you we give glory, together with your Father who is without beginning, and your all-holy, good and life-creating Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. So, dear brothers and sisters, being prepared, having prayed, being ready for the Gospel reading, today's Gospel is teaching us about an incident that happened in Israel. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to His custom, always on Sabbath days, went into the synagogues and taught there. And many people were marveling on His teaching. In the past, in other passages, we have learned that when He taught, they realized that He doesn't teach like the scribes and the Pharisees, but He's teaching with a specific kind of power that captivates their attention, that teaches them something, that makes them well. And the teaching of the Lord was the primary way of making people well and bringing them to Himself. Today, in this Gospel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is in the synagogue again and He is teaching and a woman comes to Him. This woman, according to the Gospel story, had been captivated by a evil spirit and she was bent over 18 years the way that she was. She had lived in this suffering condition. And now she is in front of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And the Lord touches her and she straightens up and she glorifies God, the Gospel says. However, the audience, especially the rulers, those who were in charge of the synagogue, start criticizing him, telling 
talking among themselves, saying that he should not have healed her because it is Saturday, it is the Sabbath, on which day the Jews were not supposed to work, they weren't supposed to do anything. And Christ turns to them and says that they are hypocrites because if it was their oxen or a donkey that had fallen into a ditch, they would have taken it out, helped it out, even if it was a Sabbath. And they take their animals to drink water and do other little things that are necessities and they cannot do without on the Sabbath day. And he says that this is a daughter of Abraham and I rescued her, I fixed her problem, I made her straight. So let's reflect upon little different nuances that we have in this gospel. First of all, this woman is bent over. What does that mean? The gravity of this planet is pulling everything into it. And if you remember from your basic physics classes, if you have a pillar, a straight pillar, and that pillar stays million years in one spot, after million years that pillar may look like a cone because the gravity of the earth pulls the molecules of that stone or metal pillar towards itself. Slowly it will take million years to notice any difference, but it becomes a cone looking. The bottom is wider than the top. And that is a theory in physics. And so is life. In the Garden of Eden, our ancestors were given two trees, one for eating and one for fasting from. As being in the fasting season today for the incarnation of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, this is the nativity fast we're in, we learn that the Lord our God who created us, wanted us to eat from the tree of life, to be in communion with Him, and also to fast. In other words, to draw our attention away from other things and bring our attention to Himself. So this woman came to the Lord with that specific way. She left everything in her life and came to the synagogue and found the Lord and re-established communion with Him. And the result, the closest proximity was established. She was touched by the Lord and she was cured from her infirmity. The rulers of the synagogue had and did many times criticize our Lord for working on the Sabbath day. They said, why are your disciples picking grains from the fields and eating them? That's a work. Why did you heal the man with a withered hand on the Sabbath day? Why in this case did you heal this person who had, was bent over on the Sabbath day? Now, the understanding of the Sabbath was very important. The Sabbath was established by Moses in the Ten Commandments, that it should be the day of the Lord. In other words, the reason for having a Sabbath is that we will leave everything, or in that case, the Israelites should leave everything and get closer to God. That the day should be dedicated to establishing relationship with the Lord. Because the rest of the week, the other days, we were continuously doing other things that were either self-centered or other-centered. We were working, doing things for ourselves. And sometimes in that busyness of life, we forget that God has created everything. He is in charge of everything. He gives everything to us. And no matter how hard we work, sometimes we fail. Sometimes it doesn't matter how difficult the problems are. When we rely on the blessings of the Lord, then all problems are resolved. So for that reason, because in the Garden of Eden, humanity, Adam, did not follow the commandment of the Lord. And instead of fasting from the tree that was designed for fasting, 
and eating from the tree that was designed for receiving life from the Lord, they did the opposite. They stayed away from the Lord after they ate from the tree that was forbidden. The story goes like this. They ate by the guile of the enemy, by the uh, misleading of the snake, the serpent, in, real, in reality the evil one, and they ate from the forbidden tree, and then they hid themselves from the Lord. In other words, they separated themselves from God, the source of life, the tree of life, who gives life to us. And so in this story we find that the Sabbath is mentioned, and the Sabbath again was established for reversing that process, that we cut ourselves from the other things, from the tree of knowledge, the tree that is keeping us busy in the life and returning to the presence of God and presenting ourselves to Him on the Sabbath day. And that is why our Lord followed the example of Moses and others who came after that and He followed the Sabbath and He went to the synagogue and opened the scriptures and read them for His disciples and for everyone who was in the synagogue to show them that He is with them. He is keeping the law by being in the synagogue and dedicating that day to God. However, one thing that was very difficult for Israelites to understand, that Christ was and is and will forever be the Lord. He is the creator of the universe who had become human. That was impossible for them to comprehend, to understand, and in the result they were accusing Him for working on that day. However, the Lord Christ says, My Father is working and He's still working and I am working with Him. What does that work mean? In our church, the liturgy, liturgia, means the work of the people. What is the liturgia for? What is the liturgy for? What kind of work is that? It's the work of our salvation. The people together work for their salvation. And it is done on the Christian Sabbath, which is Sunday. That it's the day of the Lord. Kyriaki in Greek means the day of the Lord, which is the equivalent of Sunday. Uh, and that was the original name of that day. And on that day, the Lord is working and us people are working together on our salvation. And when this woman comes to the Lord, He continues to work. He continues His process of salvation for humanity. And perhaps that is why when on the cross, he cries out, it is finished. In other words, he had accomplished the work of salvation as far as it concerned his crucifixion, his self-sacrifice for the sin of humanity. He had come and he had preached the word of salvation. The kingdom of God had been proclaimed. He had cured as a Messiah many, many people. And then at the end, He had put the seal on His work by His cross, by crucify, being crucified, and later on by rising from the dead. And so that was one thing that was difficult for Israelites to understand that the Lord is still working. And that on Sabbath day, when we rest, that's exactly what it means, to enter into the work of the Lord, to enter into participating in the process, into the process of our salvation. And that's why Christ, in a sense, seemingly, it seemed to them that was breaking the Sabbath. But in reality, He was inviting them and us today into the work of salvation that is happening on that day, on that Sabbath day. So, let's talk about being bent down. As I said, the gravity of the earth is pulling everything, including us, into the ground. Eventually, we die. 
and that was the result of separation from God. And when humans were separated from the Lord, God said to them that you will die. And today, when a child is born, we celebrate, and the growth of the child we celebrate and we're proud. But in reality, death begins from the moment of birth. When we are born, we are gradually getting closer to the day of our death. That is one certain thing that will happen in our life on the day of our birth. We know that we will die eventually. So that was what the Lord said. You will begin to die. You will begin to die and we die, start dying from the moment of our birth. And this woman was on the way to death. She had gotten closer to the earth by being bent down. Then we also need to look at positive examples of being uh, hunched over or being humbled and bowed way ahead, our head. In the example of the, product, uh, the, uh, the Pharisee and the uh, tax collector who come into the temple. In the gospel we learn that one of them comes upright. He's proud of himself, of his doings, of the things that he does for the temple and for his nation. And however, the tax collector comes hunched over. He comes with bowed head. And they are standing together in the temple and one out of his pride and confidence, prays to the Lord and thanks Him for creating him like this, such a good human being who does everything right and not like the other, in a sense, like the loser who's standing on the other side of the temple and is a sinner. However, the sinner person, the other person, prays to the Lord and asks for Lord's forgiveness and is repentant and he is mourning and he's crying for his sins and in that sense they both leave the temple but the roles have changed now the one who comes with a repentant heart is justified the other one who is proud of himself and his doings he leaves hunched over the word anthropos in greek as I have perhaps said in the past here in the studio, means upright. Humans are the only creatures on this planet who are upright, looking up. Because we do not receive our food only from the earth. Other creatures are searching continuously for food, having their heads down to the earth. And humans, as our Lord says in one during one of his temptations in the desert that we are not to live only by bread but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And so therefore not only by food, physical food that we eat, we are living on this world, in this world, but we also are continuously in search of spiritual food. That's why we're upright. We're continuously looking up to the Lord to find our spiritual nourishment from Him. And when the other temptation happens, our Lord tells the Satan that we are not to bow to anything but God alone. When the Satan tells him that if the Lord Christ, whom the Satan couldn't really understand who he was, bows down to him and worships him, he will give him all the kingdoms of the world. And the Lord said that we are to bow down to God alone. In our liturgy, we proclaim the priest in a quiet voice, reads a prayer, a mystical prayer saying that Lord bless them because they have not bowed before flesh and blood but before you, the awesome God. So dear brothers and sisters, like this hunched over woman, we come into the service of the Lord. We come into the work of salvation which is our liturgia, our 
uh, Sunday service, we come like this woman with bowed head. We come like that tax collector with bowed head, with repentant heart. The head, the, the neck of our heart is bent over. The neck of our heart is hunched over by repentance. And we enter into the work of our Lord. He is still working as His Father is still working. He is still saving us. He is in the work of our liturgy to save us through it. And we come with bowed head. And we bow not in front of anything else, not in front of flesh and blood, but before Him, the awesome God. So that, like that uh, tax collector, we will also be justified. And we will also leave the temple upright as a justified human being, as a human being that has connection with the Lord, as a human being that has been restored to receive communion from the tree of life, to be in communion with God. And that's where the communion comes in, that we partake of the body of blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and we enter into His body. We become part and parcel of His body. So in today's Gospel, the Lord tells us, teaches us that He is here to save humanity. And that on that Sabbath day, when we separate that day for the Lord, the Lord embraces us on that day. That He comes close to us and He touches us. And through the relationship with the Lord, we are made well. In last week's interpretation of the Gospel, I talked about the fact that when we come to the Lord, we ask, ask His blessings, He touches us. He gets closer to us and by that touch we are made well. Not necessarily He addresses our wounds and our infirmities as a physical doctor, as a human doctor, but He approaches our infirmities in its wholeness because He is the physician of our souls and bodies. He is the physician of the whole human being. And the healing does not necessarily happen by addressing a specific wound or specific infirmity. In this case, the uh, bending over of the, of the back of this woman. But when the Lord touches us, we are restored to our original likeness, original image, which is whole and without blemish. That, that's the way that the Lord created us. And in the process of getting closer to the Lord, all our infirmities are cured. All our difficulties are resolved. Some of the physical ones will remain. But regardless of having physical infirmities, sometimes and most of the time and perhaps all the time, we feel that we now are complete, that we are with the Lord, nothing else matters. And so, dear brothers and sisters, in today's lesson, we learn that the Lord is working. The Lord is working in the Sunday service. The Lord is working to straighten us up so that coming with a repentant heart, we will go home as an anthropos, as an upright creature that has been created in his own image and likeness, so that the burdens that we have, we will bring to him and he will take it upon himself. He will make our yoke lighter and sweeter and we will go into the world like this woman goes to the world glorifying the Lord and we will not be called hypocrites if we address things in an appropriate way that we don't do one thing and think another way or we don't think one way and act the opposite of our thoughts and our words. So today, let us bring the head of our heart hunched over 
in humility to the Lord so that He will straighten our heart, He will straighten our steps to, towards Himself, and He will justify us so that we will live our lives as participants of the Kingdom of God in His presence, in communion with the Tree of Life, eating from the right tree, eating the fruits of the cross the Lord gave us after the great supper out in an upper room. Take it, this is my body, and drink of this, this is my blood, for the remission of your sins. The sins are what bring us to the servitude of the evil one. The separation of God, from God brings us to bow in front of the evil one. And this woman was possessed by an evil spirit for 18 years and in servitude and in suffering. She comes to the Lord and by a single touch she receives her uprightness and leaves glorifying the Lord now and forever. Thank you. You do the same.